All right, it's time to give a huge shout out to the sponsor of today's episode, happyhippo.com. So if you guys haven't checked this out, you got to go to happyhippo.com because they have some of the highest quality Kratom products that I've ever come across. And if you guys aren't familiar with what Kratom is, it's an herbal substance that has many different uses, everything from a balanced mind to energy. You can it can help you relax. And my wife and I, uh, over the last couple of weeks, have tried out some of their products. And I have to say, it has improved her sleep specifically. She's very anxious, and her mind runs at night. And it has helped her fall asleep and stay asleep. She actually was using one of the uh, powders that comes in a pouch from Happy Hippo and uh, just dropped it into her water and you know off she went and she was just she, she was very happy. Let me just put it that way. And so myself during the workday, uh, if you guys didn't know, I have a big boy job. I, I work uh, in, in contract management and I need that balance. I need the energy during the day. And they have something called Hyper Hippo and an energy shot. And those energy shots come in those little tiny bottles. You guys are familiar with it from other brands that uh, use that type of packaging, but there's nothing like this, all right? This energy shot, I take it, easy to take, and within minutes, I feel the effects. There's no massive crash after I take it either, which is a huge deal, right? How many energy drinks have you taken uh, and coffee have you drank throughout the day that just leads to the massive crash? Well, this doesn't, and it's, it's an all-natural herb. And I'm telling you right now, it will help you get through your day. It can help you relax depending on that the type of product you're looking for. Happy Hippo delivers. And guess what? Right now, if you have an order of 200 or more, you can get free next day FedEx shipping. And also their stuff tastes great. So check out happyhippo.com. Support the WWE podcast and Happy Hippo. And do yourself a favor as well, guys. I'm telling you right now, if it can help my wife go to sleep for somebody as anxious as she is and as somebody that needs as much energy as I do during the day to, to do this podcast and to uh, do my job during the day. And right now, you can save 15% on your entire order by using promo code WWE15. That's right, WWE15. 15 will get you 15% off of your entire order. And starting August 28th, they are having their largest sale of the year on their Hyper Hippo product, 40% off. So you'll definitely want to check them out then. But anytime you can use WWE 15 as your promo code to get 15% off your entire order. Check out happyhippo.com whether you're trying to relax or whether you're, you need energy or balance during the day. Happyhippo.com. This is WWE superstar Drew McIntyre, and you're listening to the WWE Podcast. The one that everybody wants, me. This is my idol. You're going to acknowledge me. Welcome, everybody, to the current state of WWE. We are now post fast lane, looking ahead to Crown Jewel and on November 4th, so just about a month away in Saudi Arabia. Then it's Survivor Series, and then we don't have another event till Rumble. So things are rolling and rolling quickly. Uh, we've got Anthony DeMarco, as we do every single Monday, to talk about what the heck's going on in WWE. And uh, coming off fast lane, there's quite a th number of things to talk about, but uh, to use a phrase I don't want to, uh, Anthony, what do you want to talk about? <laughs> how much did it take you to actually muster that up <laughs> but it took uh, everything in my soul yeah <laughs> well look fast lane i think was uh it, it was more of a stepping stone pay-per-view but i still think that more or less like given the results and how it advanced up storylines it continued to further the i guess trend of solid pay-per-views meeting expectations or exceeding them under the triple h regime yeah, the trend continues. I don't think this one blew many people away. It it uh, we've we've kind of become accustomed to this type of outcome where the event may not be perfectly, uh, you know, perfectly portrayed or perfectly hyped up, and then you come out of it going, "Wow, that was great." And uh, this one was, I think, 
really good. I don't think it was awesome or super memorable, but it gave us a couple of things that I think we're going to talk about here. And that is first and foremost, Jey Uso and Cody Rhodes winning the tag titles from the Judgment Day. Uh, an outcome that a lot of us did not expect, including myself, but I understand why they did it. So I guess, what is your reaction to Cody and Jay Uso winning the tag titles? I was very surprised. Like I did my own version of my prediction show on After Dark, and I was pretty certain that uh, the Judgment Day were going to retain the tag titles here, mainly because I just didn't see the benefit of having another makeshift tag team hold the gold and to be honest like not to say that the judgment day is a makeshift tag team or kevin and sammy were a makeshift tag team but for the most part those are single stars that came together like sammy and kevin are more or less single stars again damian and finn have been single stars their entire career despite being in the faction together in the judgment day and i just thought like well at least there was a story to be told to continue the fractured relationship of damian and finn and finally get to maybe uh, Damien cashing in, or what have you. But with Jay and Cody, I didn't really see where they could go with it. Now, obviously, since that they've won the titles, I've thought about it more. Like, obviously, I would imagine that they're going to start telling the story of, and I believe you mentioned this maybe before, I think it was on your prediction show that you mentioned this, that like, okay, will Cody be able to trust Jay? I'm sure that they'll tie in Drew McIntyre into this and continue his descent into a heel turn. So I get it. It's just I'm I'm kind of ready for the tag team titles to go back into the traditional tag team division because even if they split the titles, I think that they have enough talent in the tag division to support it. Like, okay, uh, Eric is hurt right now, but you have the Viking Raiders. You have Imperium. You have, even though we're not fans of them, the New Day on Monday Night Raw. You have the Alpha Academy. You have the Judgment Day, if you want to consider them a tag team. On SmackDown, when they're healthy, you have Pretty Deadly. You have the um, the Brawling Brutes. You have the OC. You have, um, uh, who's the other one? There's another tag team on uh, SmackDown. Oh, the LWO. You have mm-hmm. the Street Profits. So, on both brands right now, you have traditional tag teams and like kind of like five or six teams deep on either brand. So I think for me, well, I get now that I could really think about it, the story they're going to want to tell with Cody and Jay. I just think that after so many months and close to a year now of the tag team titles kind of being exclusive to the main event scene, that eventually I would like them to not only split, but maybe just go back consistently into the traditional tag team division. That feels kind of like a trend, especially with the major titles like the Undisputed title that has been within Roman's immediate circle. Of course, another deep dive topic we won't get into, but uh, just for this analogy, it's kind of the same thing. It's just been in his little circle. It's not expanded to the rest of the roster. It's very limited in who seems to be able to compete for it, who is even able to talk about it. So that is going to be ultimately, I think, the goal. Now, this is... I think in most people's eyes, the it's used now as a vehicle for Cody and Jay to be able to go to SmackDown, even though they were doing it before they had the titles. Hell, Cody showed up on SmackDown this past week with no explanation. Jay showed up in this past week with no explanation. They just show up when they want. So, but I guess in if, if they want to do this right, then that is a vehicle to be able to and, and a bridge to get Jay and Cody to SmackDown. Now, why would they want to go to SmackDown? Well, a lot of people are suspecting that. You could have Cody eventually challenge Roman again before WrestleMania to get that match out of the way. And Jay, I mean, he could also, while I don't want to see it, feud with his brother. Um, you know, I think the Civil War thing hopefully is over for now. And uh, But that seems to be the ultimate goal outside of the fact that, of course, they could compete as a tag team on SmackDown to work with the teams that are already there and help put over new talent. I don't expect this to be a very long reign. Uh, That would be my question to you. When you look at this reign, and and we both agree it's probably not going to be a long-term reign, um, do you think that, number one, this is for the purpose of being able to get to Cody Roman Part 2 at some point, and do you think that their title reign, the tag title reign, is going to last very long? Well, before... We we had the Usos hold the tag team titles 
if you want to just look at their reign with the SmackDown tag titles, was over a year, right? When they broke the record. Mm-hmm. Then they were unified tag team champions for about 11 or 10, 10 or 11 months. Sammy and Kevin held, held the tag titles for about six months. Now you get the Judgment Day holding it the duration of just one pay-per-view to the next. I don't see that this could be a super long story. I think to your point, this is a way for them to use Cody and Jay on SmackDown consistently, consistently is enough for me to say. And if that's the goal, hey, more power to you. I get it. I understand. Like, at least there is an attention to detail where they're just like, look, we really want Jay and Cody to have the flexibility to go from show to show. And this is a way to justify it creatively. So I do respect that. I'm just not really sure how long you could draw this out. And to your point, I don't really know if I want to see Jay, you know, interact with his bloodline members or his fellow bloodline members yet. You know, I I always think about it. I, uh, when I watched, I believe it was SmackDown two weeks ago. I said, you know what? If they keep Jay and Jimmy apart for like past Royal Rumble, I probably will get to a point where I'll want to see Jimmy versus Jay. I think that if they keep them separated for like six months or whatever it may be, I will get to a point where I could be like, you know what? I will, I do want to see an interpromotional match like raw versus SmackDown and have a, you know, brother versus brother thing. I think that would be enough time to let it breathe. But this is kind of suggesting now that SmackDown could see Jay and Cody come over that maybe we're going to be seeing Jimmy and Jay and Solo interact way before the Royal Rumble season, especially if we're going to see Cody Rhodes face off against Roman Reigns between now and WrestleMania. Because if we're assuming that it's The Rock versus Roman Reigns for WrestleMania 40, that means that I would imagine Cody Rhodes is going to challenge him for the championship at the Elimination Chamber or somewhere along those lines. Like like you mentioned, there's only so many pay-per-views now between um between now and wrestlemania and if i really think about it like there are only four pay-per-views left between now and wrestlemania and none of which are really considered b-level pay-per-views like survivor series and rumble are part of the big four crown jewel has kind of become like wrestlemania junior just because of how much money is thrown behind it and the elimination chamber while traditionally a b-level pay-per-view now will be the third consecutive year that it's done outside the united states you had in saudi arabia in 2022 you had in montreal in 2023 with obviously some major hype behind it with Sami Zayn in the main event and now you're going to have it in australia so even the elimination chamber is no longer really in my opinion considered a b-level pay-per-view so it really kind of feels like it's full steam ahead here between now and wrestlemania and it kind of feels like they're already starting to plant some tree- seeds before the grandest stage of them all they have a lot to get to, and I, I mentioned this the last couple of shows, but it, it's worth repeating that WWE and Roman need to come to an agreement where he can't take any more time off that is exceeds like a couple of weeks. I don't need him on the show every week, but he needs to be at every single damn event from now to Mania because there are a lot of stories he has to wrap up before WrestleMania, including Cody Rhodes, presumably, including LA Knight that somehow is going to be crammed in there that he's directly involved in the bloodline now. Uh, on maybe Randy Orton, although you could wait until after Mania if you really wanted to. Then there's AJ Styles, who just got beat up and hospitalized by the bloodline. Roman Reigns cannot take any more time off. There are so many stories outside the bloodline that need to be wrapped up. And Cody going to SmackDown anytime he wants would lead you to believe that they are probably going to get to that before Mania. And I would presume it's at the Rumble. And then it's, I don't know when LA Knight fits into it. It could be more at Crown Jewel, or it could be actually at uh, Survivor Series. And they're going to forego the the uh, War Games match, which I would forego that for a championship match any day of the week. There's a lot I don't like about the War Games match, logically. But uh, the, the, the idea is here, the most important point is they need Roman there every single big event every from now to mania he cannot skip any more events as far as pay-per-views go you just can't afford to do it there are too many stories to wrap up you can't just say well we'll get to it after wrestlemania that makes no sense for a lot of the stuff going on right now so you know that is my biggest point and uh like you said with jay and jimmy now that they can go to smackdown anytime 
I'm cool with that interpromotional match, like you said, but th- it still feels like it's way too soon. Like you said, it feels like this could happen after WrestleMania or if they want to get to WrestleMania and do Jimmy J like, uh, fine, I guess that would be enough time, but I don't want to see Jimmy and Jay next week on SmackDown go face to face. And Oh, here we go again. Everything's, you know, everything is this civil war being reignited <laughs> and, and there's nobody else around that even cares about what's going on. Every, it's just like its own world. No one can penetrate the shield of the civil war. I, I really believe that they won't go back there, but you know, God knows. Uh, so that's, that's to me, the biggest point though, is Roman cannot skip any other events. There's no more. Well, it's a B pay-per-view. Well, no, 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 no. It's over to me. He, I don't know if you agree, but he needs to be at every single pay-per-view from now to mania. Oh, a hundred percent. Because like you said, like you have AJ Styles who presumably will get his crack at the bloodline when he returns. You have LA Knight that I believe everyone wants to see. Cody Rhodes has just kind of been like anointed as like, well, he, he obviously, he obviously deserves a, uh, a rematch. And, you know, he's kind of just latched on to Jey Uso to kind of stay relevant. And I know everyone's can get up in arms about it, but Cody Rhodes, aside from Brock Lesnar, which was a very stop and go rivalry because of Brock's part time schedule, Cody Rhodes has pretty much just been latching on to other people's storylines to kind of stay relevant and creative. And I don't actually even say that because of my hate for Cody Rhodes. That's more of creative's problem. Like, that's not Cody Rhodes' fault. It's just they feel like they've been treading water with Cody Rhodes since WrestleMania, aside from his program with Brock Lesnar, which, like I said, was very stop and go. So, I mean, you really can't afford to see Roman Reigns skip any more pay-per-views, nor do I think he will. Now, do I think between Survivor Series and Royal Rumble, he'll probably take a month or two off? Probably, because that's a two-month gap between major pay-per-views. But in terms of missing pay-per-views, I really don't think that we can see that. And and in regards to Jimmy and Jay and like where we could see them going with their story, like I agree. Like I don't want to see them cross paths at all between now and Rumble. But let's just say they didn't. Like you could go back to the well with an age old tactic to set up an inner promotional story uh, or program. Like they did this with Kurt Angle and and HBK when they were on SmackDown and Raw, respectively, in 05 leading to WrestleMania 21, where you could have Jimmy and Jay encounter each other for the first time in like five or six months in the Rumble match and then set up like a Raw versus SmackDown interpromotional brother versus brother match. And then that I think I would be okay to see because, you know, by that time, we've gone through the entire fall, we've gone through the holidays, now we're in the dead of winter, and you're just like, you know what, enough time has passed, now I would be okay seeing a Civil War type of angle. But it just kind of feels, and maybe this is where the Vince McMahon stuff comes into play, that although we know, as he mentioned, he's not in the weeds of the creative I think when we see some major, the the major storylines being played out, that's when we kind of see Vince's fingerprints over it. And I think one of the hallmarks to Vince's creative is everything now, no long-term storytelling. And the fact that they're kind of rushing Cody and Jay back over to SmackDown to presumably get to the bloodline sooner rather than later is kind of inferring to me that maybe that is something that Vince is pushing for aside from Triple H does seem very vincey yeah it does smell like vince and when it will walks like a duck and talks like a duck it kind of you know 99 of the time it's a duck and i i don't don't believe any of the weed stuff as i've said and we've talked about so many times it, i just don't believe any of that he said that before believe it or not i think it was like five ten years ago when he said he was kind of you know delegating these duties to younger staff and management and he was just doing the same damn thing it was all but optics it's perception it's hey what do the people not want to think that's going on backstage and let's pretend that's not happening i think there's a lot of that going on so we don't truly know how deep into the weeds vince is is in the whole creative uh, side of things but let's be honest he's probably doing the same thing almost that he was when he was running raw and actually owned the company so this to me is uh yeah it does smell of vince but um they trot Triple H out there every single post uh, show press conference and they, you know, try to make it from an, an optic standpoint, say, yeah, oh, yeah, Triple H is running things. It's like, yeah, I'm sh- yeah, on paper he is, but in be in behind the scenes, we all know what's really going on. Um, that said, I mean, when it comes back to this uh, Civil War stuff, just to put a bow on it, I, I really 
I have no problem with that happening again, as you said, but down the line. I also am really looking forward to at some point, maybe in the next year, year and a half of a bloodline reunion as baby faces. I think that is going to be a monstrous reunion when they all go through their their strokes and through their their paces of being heels and, and uh, you know, having programs outside of one another and working with talent out, outside the bloodline. And at some point you have another massive heel group beating down Roman or beating down Jimmy and Jay. And slowly they all start to come back together as a baby face group. That is absolutely in the cards in the next, I'd say one to two years. And it's going to be a monstrous, reu- a monstrous reunion. And, and then there's a whole nother story to tell with them as baby faces. So that I, that I'm looking forward to as well. But uh, any, f- any other comments on this? And I know that of course, guys, we're not ignoring the fact that Jimmy or rather uh, Jay was hammered <laughs> in the post press conference with uh, Cody Rhodes, who also seemed half inebriated. So we, you know, we know that happened and, uh, you know, we'll see what WWE does about it. But I don't know if you have any wrap up comments because I do want to talk about uh, I'm talk about punk here. So uh, any any thoughts? Well, I guess my final thoughts would be concurring with you that I think that they're coming to the end of the finish. They're coming towards the finish line here with the heel version of the bloodline. And, you know, we heard the Rock say that they want to do something that could end something and begin something as well with him facing Roman Reigns. And since that they've already done the Civil War stuff, I think that the beginning would be the start of the babyface version of the bloodline. Maybe Roman beating The Rock at WrestleMania would be him realizing that he has to change his ways, and The Rock helped him do that. And the end would be finally ending the Civil War toxic relationship between him and his family. So that's the way that I'm kind of looking at it. I just hope that they continue the slow burn with it. All right, it's time to give a huge shout out to the sponsor of today's episode, HappyHippo.com. So if you guys haven't checked this out, you got to go to HappyHippo.com because they have some of the highest quality Kratom products that I've ever come across. And if you guys aren't familiar with what Kratom is, it's an herbal substance that has many different uses, everything from a balanced mind to energy. You can, it can help you relax. And my wife and I, uh, over the last couple of weeks have tried out some of their products and I have to say it has improved her sleep specifically. She's very anxious and her mind runs at night and it has helped her fall asleep and stay asleep. She actually was using one of the, uh, powders that comes in a pouch from happy hippo and, uh, just dropped it into her water and, you know, off she went and she was just, she, she was very happy. Let me just put it that way. And so myself during the workday, uh, if you guys didn't know, I have a big boy job. I, I work, uh, in, in contract management and I need that balance. I need the energy during the day and they have something called Hyper Hippo and an energy shot. And those energy shots come in those little tiny bottles. You guys are familiar with it from other brands that uh, use that type of packaging, but there's nothing like this, all right? This energy shot, I take it, easy to take, and within minutes, I feel the effects. There's no massive crash after I take it either, which is a huge deal, right? How many energy drinks have you taken uh, and coffee have you drank throughout the day that just leads to the massive crash? Well, this doesn't, and it's, it's an all-natural herb. And I'm telling you right now, it will help you get through your day. It can help you relax. Depending on that, the type of product you're looking for, Happy Hippo delivers. And guess what? Right now, if you have an order of 200 or more, you can get free next day FedEx shipping. And also their stuff tastes great. So check out happyhippo.com. Support the WWE podcast and Happy Hippo. And do yourself a favor as well, guys. I'm telling you right now, if it can help my wife go to sleep for somebody as anxious as she is and as somebody that needs as much energy as I do during the day to to do this podcast and to uh, do my job during the day. And right now, you can save 15% on your entire order by using promo code WWE15. That's right, WWE15. 15 will get you 15% off of your entire order. And starting August 28th, they are having their largest sale of the year on their Hyper Hippo product, 40% off. So you'll definitely want to check them out then. But anytime you can use WWE 15 as your promo code to get 15% off your entire order. Check out happyhippo.com whether you're trying to relax or whether you're, you need energy or balance during the day. Happyhippo.com. Yeah, absolutely. There's no need to rush it. There's a whole other side of this coin that they haven't even touched yet. That's going to be a lot of fun. 
And, uh, you know, maybe it's against the Judgment Day or another faction that exists at that time that they can oppose. And it's going to be so much fun to see. And you're right. That could be exactly it. Maybe at the maybe it starts at WrestleMania after the Rock Roman and they shake hands and they hug. And uh, that essentially turns Roman babyface. And then, you know, the rest of the pieces of the puzzle can come in over the summer. You know, that kind of thing. We'll see. But um, that said, let's move on to uh, a topic that is becoming more and more in our face on social media. If you have spent any time on the wrestling side of social media, you have seen these rumors, but also credible reports coming from, you know, not just these random clickbait sites, but credible sources that are talking about CM Punk coming to Survivor Series in Chicago and that he that he's been offered a contract or WWE is interested in offering him a contract, but things seem to be trending towards punk actually showing up in, in Chicago at survivor series. So that's a month and a half away about, and I'll pause on my thoughts. I'm curious on yours. Would you want to see this? Do you believe it? What do you think? It's a weird, um, I do believe it. I think that we've learned in recent years and it, most recently with edge, that when there's enough smoke, there is a fire. And it's weird. Maybe it's just because I'm such a WWE loyalist, but I really want to see it after Edge jump ship. And I don't know what it is about Edge's switch over to AEW that bothered me so much, but I feel like from Punk's point of view, and I don't like the way he conducted himself in AEW, and I think that he really embarrassed himself in a lot of ways, even if maybe at the root of it, he wasn't at fault and it was like the EVPs that kind of goaded him into it. But I just felt like he really acted beneath himself. But maybe for him, after all these years of trashing you know, WWE and I left professional wrestling in 2005 or whatever and inferring that WWE isn't uh, professional wrestling, maybe it took him going to somewhere else to see like, uh, maybe it's not that bad. <laughs> maybe it's not the end of the world. And maybe we will go almost a full decade of no CM Punk for him to finally show up at, in his hometown at Survivor Series. And I really want to see it because I think that we deserve to see an actual send off of CM Punk, which I imagine he would do a run between Survivor Series and WrestleMania to kind of do a send off. Or maybe he does a very part time type schedule. And I just don't think it would be cool to kind of remember him as, you know, his AEW version of himself as the lasting image of CM Punk after he wasn't in the wrestling business for seven odd years before his return in. 2021 i believe it was so i don't know i originally didn't want to see cm punk but i guess a mixture of of edge jumping to aew and i guess just not wanting to see punk go off into the sunset in the fashion that he did with aew makes me want to see him and i i just feel like him versus seth rollins makes a world of sense for wrestlemania 40 yeah, definitely. You know, there is a lot to be said for CM Punk coming to WWE. I'm not somebody that doesn't understand why people would want it, why it would be good for dollars and cents to WWE. I totally understand that. But again, I, my hesitation is with how he conducted himself. It was very unprofessional. And again, he may not have been at fault. But there's always two sides to every story. And typically, just like in any divorce of marriage or whatever, there's always two sides. And typically, more often than not, there are, you know, two sides to be blamed. There's not just one. It's never usually clear cut of only this person that was responsible. It's usually a collaborative effort to to screw that up. And I think in part CM Punk was. But that said, Punk should at least outwardly pretend nothing's wrong. You don't embarrass the company no matter what's going on backstage. You just you just don't do that. I don't like the way he conducted himself as if he's above the company, sitting there like a slob, eating a hamburger while he's in a post conference, embarrassing the owner of the company, embarrassing the guys he's working with, talking about how he's an old man. Like that came across so amateur hour for me that it it was such a turn off and then talking about how he's it's a toxic place backstage and all this like it's just stuff that no matter where you work you just you know especially on a on a public 
sphere. Like if you are a part of a large organization, a public figure that has a large following, you just don't do that because guess what? Your, your next employer is going to remember that and they're going to know that you publicly embarrass the company that now you want to work for. So I don't know. That set really bad with me. However, all that said, would I still want to see him back? I mean, my wrestling curiosity is there. Like I, as a fan, sure, I'd be very interested to see what, what a punk nine years later would look like in WWE, what he would say to re- revive himself. Uh, because as you said, he said WWE wasn't pro wrestling in his infamous promo in AEW. You know, there are a lot of reasons why I would want him back. And, and sure, it's a, a one or two or three off. I would imagine WrestleMania against Seth Rollins is there. Seth Rollins has had some harsh comments for him in, you know, talking about how we don't want you here. And so there's a lot there. And to see also Seth Rollins not be so jokey all the time with his character and, you know, flashy and just be downright serious with Punk, because I think that's what it would transform Seth into. That's interesting to me, too. So Punk back in WWE coming full circle after nine years, it would get a massive pop in Chicago. I, I just I wouldn't want Punk to be champion. I don't want him being the focal point of a, of a championship run. I will say that because it's not about Punk anymore, just like it's not about The Rock anymore. Those guys are there to help build new talent and to help draw ratings and get more eyeballs. They're not at the point of uh, giving, uh, you know, having long championship runs. So, yeah, sure. The, the, that part of me is very curious to see what it would look like and who he would face and what the promos would be like. Yeah. And the other part about this is, and you mentioned something there that applies to it, is you don't want CM Punk to be the focal point of the main event all the time or as a world champion or what have you. And it makes you wonder if that's why Edge made the jump to AEW because you saw a guy like CM Punk become the world champion and one of, if not the main piece of that main event scene and arguably the face of the company at one point in time before he ultimately got suspended last year and then obviously fired a few months back. So I guess like when we look at the difference right now between AEW and WWE, do you think that, and kind of shifting a bit to Edge, do you think that for older guys who are approaching the twilight of their career or already in the twilight of of their career, do you think they see an opportunity in AEW where they can kind of have more creative freedom and have one less last kick at the can of being like a main eventer as like in edge's case, like we kind of touched a bit already. I touched it more on after dark, but does it not feel like he just went there to go have fun with his friends and have a chance to once again, be like a face of the company or a main eventer? Well, sure. I mean, that's the massive selling point of AEW is creative freedom. You know, you're not binded by management's whims and woes and, and, you know, they have a creative direction, but your the selling point is it's more um, creative freedom, which is a massive deal. You also get paid comparably to WWE. So that is AEW selling point. It's also more creatively open in terms of TV 14. So you don't have to worry about the blood and guts part of it or the a little more elevated uh, cussing. So there's that if you want to add that to your character and stories. So, I mean, that Jericho, Dean Ambrose, John Moxley. I mean, you're talking about, uh, of course, Punk, who that I think was one of the biggest reasons he went to AEW in the first place was the creative freedom and being kind of the anti-establishment organization to WWE being the alternative or whatever you want to label it as. And the same thing for Edge. Again, we I know we went over this last time, but we don't know exactly what the terms that were offered to Edge, but Edge felt probably that he wasn't going to stick around for what they were offering him creatively in cash. And they said he said, "Hey, you know what? I'm going to go to AEW where I can I have a lot of friends over there. I haven't worked with a lot of these guys yet. It's more creatively flexible." I'm getting paid the same or more. I don't know, but probably around the same he was getting in WWE. It is an attractive offer. And what brings a lot of those guys, as you said, that are in the twilight into their uh, into AEW is, hey, I can not just fade off into the sunset. But if I got more in me that WWE wouldn't let me show, I'm going to go over here where they will. Because AEW needs that talent more than WWE does. And they're going to allow them more flexibility. So I absolutely understand the temptation to go. And I don't blame him one bit. Do you see edge any differently now that he's gone to aw because honestly for me i don't maybe it's just me being a wwe loyalist and all this and i've kind of like thought to myself like man are you that big of a mark or whatever it is but like 
I don't know why I look so down on edge and not only because he (laughs) like, and I feel terrible saying this, like who the hell am I? But like, not only because he made the jump, but we spoke about this last week as well. It's also like his messaging. I feel like, like almost telling us that we were wrong and how dare you criticize like someone like take a lap or get a breath, whatever he said, go get some air. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, and it, it's more just like for me thinking, like, dude, like, why don't you just say I'm going to play with my friends? That's it. That's all you have to say is I want to go have fun playing with my friends, which he effectively already said when he mentioned his daughter saying go have fun with Uncle Jay or whatever it is. Mm-hmm. Like, that's what he did. He made a selfish decision. That's okay. And after everything he's gone through. Of all wrestlers, he deserves to write the end of his own wrestling career. But you're openly going to a company that struggles to sell tickets, that has a very niche audience, just to get a bigger role creatively and kind of do whatever you want, which is okay. But like, don't make it sound like you're doing this for like the greater good of the wrestling business and more opportunities is better. And I don't know about you, and I guess like, you could also use this uh, comparison to CM Punk in AEW, but like, you know, Daniel Bryan went there, became Bryan Danielson, kind of changed his character. Like Chris Jericho kept the same name, but like he became uh, like, uh, what was it? The the pain maker, or then he had like El Champion, or like he made his character different than what he was as Y2J in WWE. Dean Ambrose became John Moxley, like very different type of characters. And when I saw Edge come out, I'm just like, so you use the same theme song, you use the same smoke, you did the exact same thing when you came out by like asking the crowd to cheer you or whatever he does. You did the same like pose and movement to correlate with the timing of your fireworks. I'm like, you went to WWE, you went from AEW to play the same character in WWE. And for me, it's just like, So this was all about you just wanting to have more of a creative presence, which is okay. Like I said, it's fine, but it's like, just be open and honest with us, please. Like you're, you didn't even go there to try and explore a different character. You're playing the exact same character. And I don't know why a lot of this just didn't sit right with me with edge. I I don't get it. Like I said, like, I feel like I'm on my high horse here and of all people, I should be the one to look down on Adam Copeland, but. I don't know. It just, it really didn't sit right with me. So uh, no, I I absolutely am, am understandive of why you would feel that way. And I'm not disagreeing, but I will play devil's advocate here because uh, number one, he's only been there a couple of weeks. Like he just got there. Yes. He was introduced as essentially the same guy that he was in WWE, but we haven't seen any evolution of him yet. That takes time. And perhaps down the line, we will see a much different version of edge that we didn't see in WWE and he's able to do what he wants. And we, we haven't seen any evolution yet, but it's been, you know, one to two weeks. So there's that. Um, and also I will take exception to what Adam said though. Like he, that's the problem I have. And that's the one you brought up is sure. Go do what you want. Go play with your friends. But also that's the problem I have is okay. Now you're getting mad at the people that are loyal to your character in WWE. And we're supposed to care that you just get to go work somewhere. Again, it comes back to WWE fans who are loyal to the brand. And and he, he's suddenly mad about that and criticizing us and telling us, well, we shouldn't be feeling this way when it should just be about him. Like that to me is where I drew the line. And I said, okay, I don't, I don't disagree with your decision. I understand it. It's more money. And while you're physically able to go make as much money as you can for you and your family, I get it. And if you want to go have more creative freedom and go play with your friends, like you said, Sure. But that's where I drew the line. And that's the problem I had with him was him responding to the fans as if we should we have shouldn't have this opinion. And if we do, we should go take a walk. And we don't understand the business of, you know, uh, having more opportunity. Of course we do. Uh, Of course we understand it. But for him to tell us how we should feel and then be surprised that people who are loyal to WWE and not any other brand should not be. I mean, it's just uh, that's the part that totally was disconnected from me. And that's the exception and problem I had was his response to the criticism. Yeah, it's I I don't know. Like it's it was just very odd. And it was almost like he took himself too seriously in the moment. And the other part about this is, is like, do you remember that video that he put out after his uh, I guess now has become effectively his retirement match against Seamus? 
he put out that video after the report of the, him not having a contract and he kind of like diminished the whole oh, thing yeah. like oh mm-hmm. like this whole crap like blah blah mm-hmm. blah like kind of like making everyone feel stupid for buying into this and then he goes and jumps to AEW it's just like dude who do you think you are man like mm-hmm. like I said if you want to jump to AEW that's your prerogative after everything you've been through you deserve to end your career in any fashion you want no one could take that away from you but just own it. Just say like, yeah, I came here because I wanted to play with my friends. That's it. I don't care about what people want to see from me in WWE. I don't care that I went off in the most underwhelming send off match, arguably in the history of a Hall of Famer's career. Like that's another thing. It's just like, how could he expect people to feel satisfied that his final match in WWE was a SmackDown main event in August against Sheamus? Like, and I don't care that it was in Toronto. Aside from the people that were in the building, nobody cares. Like, so, but again, this is all a moot point if he just owned up to it. And again, nobody could take that away from him. But to your point, it's like, dude, you cannot tell people how they should and shouldn't feel. And just because you told us to take a walk if we don't buy into, you know, more places to work is a better thing for the workers. Like, dude, that doesn't apply to me. Like, I'm sorry, when we watch, you know, when when we watch professional sports, like you're a baseball fan, and I presume you're a Yankee fan, right? Yep. Like, if biggest guy on the, the Yankees right now, what's his name? Uh, Aaron um, uh, uh, Judge. Yeah, Aaron yeah, Judge. Aaron Judge. If one day Aaron Judge said, you know what, I'm going to walk and I'm going to go play for the Boston Red Sox. If he came out and said, well, you know, everyone, like, you have to understand it from my point of view that I want to end my career on my terms and... Having a place to work in Boston is better for all the... Like, nobody gives a damn. You're leaving our... And I believe that you made this analogy last week. Like, Mm -hmm. you're leaving my favorite team to go to another one. And I don't care that it's beneficial for you professionally, family-wise, whatever. It's still a piss-off. So, and most professional athletes, which wrestlers are... Do I understand that and don't try and patronize fans and tell fans that they should and shouldn't feel stuff. And that's where it didn't sit right with me with Edge. If you were just honest and said, I want to go play with my friends and do whatever I want in AEW because Tony Khan doesn't really care about what over the hill wrestlers want to do. That's cool. But it's the fact of how he went about it and also tried to, you know, say that it wasn't true leading up to his switch. It was just very weird about how he went about it on a personal level. Yes, that's see, that is um, that's where I kind of drew the line. Like you said, and he his ignorance of, or it, I don't know if it's ignorance because he's a smart guy, but uh, the I guess purposeful total disregard of understanding that people are loyal to brands and people are loyal, just like you said, to the Yankees or to the Red Sox or to the Brewers or to the White Sox or to whatever or any any NHL or NBA team or NFL team. All of a sudden, we're supposed to be like, well, well, you know, my favorite player went to my opposing team. I guess I'm going to have to boo the team now and cheer for the other team he went to. Like, that's not how it works. Like in any other sport. I mean, no matter how big the player is, you're sad. and You almost feel betrayed. You feel betrayed. And now now all of a sudden, it's like they turn heel on you. So it's the same thing, except in real life. Very rarely, if ever, does a single player totally change how you feel about the brand. Very rarely. It doesn't ever happen. And nor do you totally turn on the brand that made him what he is and now all of a sudden cheer him in the brand that he's now in and boo the one that he's he wasn't like it doesn't that's not how this works and i think that of of his total disregard to that fact is what really set a lot of fans off but uh one thing on cm punk though i I, i'm i maybe i missed it do you think that he does face seth rollins at wrestlemania if he comes back like what do do you think the the short-term plan is from now to wrestlemania with punk if he returns at survivor series well, the short-term plan, I would imagine, would be... I, I would hope he comes back as a heel. Like, I hope that they take how he ended things in AEW, and even the shots that he took at WWE in AEW, and use that to their creative advantage. And I don't think this should be a babyface versus babyface match. Like, I would have him come back, and even if it's him, you know, screw Seth Rollins out of the world championship against Drew McIntyre, whoever that may be. Like, that's how I would utilize it. And maybe you put, you help CM Punk put Seth Rollins on the shelf until the Royal Rumble. You know, he returns at Survivor Series, screws 
Um, screw Seth Rollins. Seth Rollins is out from Survivor Series to Royal Rumble to get some much needed rest. And then he comes back at the Rumble and that's where you really start this build. And then you could play off some of the real life comments that Seth had about CM Punk. You could draw off of the fact that CM Punk Punk could be like, I don't even want to be here. I didn't have to come here. I just came back because I couldn't stand this phony talk crap about me behind my, like just something like that. The, my one thing would be with CM Punk is bring him back as a heel after everything he's done over the last number of years. I really don't see how you bring him back as a baby face. That's I'm all for a heel. Heel Punk is a lot of fun, but I don't think that's how he'll be received initially. And it's it's going to take a lot of work because fans that haven't watched AEW and want him back in WWE they are not going to willingly boo him because it's been such a buildup of him returning to WWE and the anticipation. It's also Chicago. Like, so the initial return, him getting booed in Chicago at Survivor Series is going to be a very tall task. Um, I mean, it could be uh, something that's done afterwards, not in Chicago where he, you know, he turns heel, but initially it's going to be very difficult to turn him heel on uh, on the fans that have been so you know excited and waiting for him to come back and i can't wait to hear what he has to say and all that so it could be like you maybe give them a few weeks of being able to cheer him and then turn him but do you think it's going to be a bit of a struggle to turn him heel given that there's so much build and it's in chicago and that kind of thing like how do you think it's going to be in terms of uh struggle to get him to a heel uh, position successfully well, in, in Chicago, you probably have a good point that that's going to be damn near impossible. Like a returning CM Punk in Chicago probably will be close to impossible to turn him heel right off the bat. But honestly, with the way CM Punk talks, with what he's done in real life over the last number of years, and against Seth Rollins, who is super over as a babyface, I don't know how much it would take for him to turn heel. Like, Let's be honest right now, like they have a lot of good baby faces, like high end baby faces right now. You have Seth Rollins, you have Cody Rhodes, you have LA Knight on SmackDown. If you want to make them single stars again, you have Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn. Jay Uso is kind of like a big baby face right now, you know, main event Jay Uso. John Cena right now is still, you know, kicking around. He's a baby face. You have The Rock incoming, who's going to be a baby face. Like, I just don't see a need to bring CM Punk back in as a major babyface just because it's already so diluted. But then you look at the heel side of things, and I mean, aside from Roman Reigns, who's never there, who's a major main event level heel? Like, okay, Shinsuke's had a nice run, but I mean, I don't think that he's going to be a mainstay in the main event scene, even though he's done amazing work. Jimmy and Solo, like, again, are they those staples in the main event? I imagine Drew McIntyre is making a beeline for hit that position in the main event. But I mean, he's still not there yet. And that's still only one guy. Gunther, even though he feels like a main eventer, is still in that mid card scene as the Intercontinental Champion. So maybe at the beginning, because of the initial shock value and him returning in his hometown and all that, it would be hard to turn him heel right off the bat. But if you really look at the landscape of WWE right now, there is an open vacancy at the main event side for the heels. And I think CM Punk would fit that bill completely well. Yeah. The guy is talented on the microphone. He could do something or say something that could turn the crowd on him pretty quickly. If it's not in Chicago uh, and, and I'm all for that. And he actually, it would it make more sense. He comes back as a heel, maybe running down the company saying he came here to show you that, you know, he's bigger than this place. I don't like the way that I left. And, you know, I left because this place sucked. Like he could bring in a lot of real stuff into the promos. That's what I would, that's what I would do if I were them is have him run down the fans in the company and, and that kind of thing, which is a lot of real feeling that he real feelings that he's had in the past and maybe still feels that's what you do. You don't have him come back and all all is well. Nothing happened. I'm back because, ah, oh, you know, I know you guys have been wanting me to come back or, you know, that uh, you guys deserve me to come back after all the support. I've heard all this. Like, I don't need him pandering to us. It makes no sense for him to pander to us. In fact, it would make sense for the opposite for him to uh, for him to just run us down and run the company down. That's what needs to happen. And that's makes the most logical sense. But do I think ultimately WWE is going to do this? Probably not. I actually think, unfortunately, while I would agree he should be a heel, ultimately, it probably will be that he'll be a baby face unless he's opposing Seth Rollins at Mania. In that case, sure, Seth Rollins 
has a lot of real life uh, negative emotion for Phil Brooks, that is probably uh, that's on the table for him to turn heel. But I just don't know if such a massive babyface reaction is going to turn WWE's mind to like, oh, well, if he's this big over as a babyface, imagine when we turn him heel, he'll be that hot. I, I, I don't I just don't have any faith that WWE is going to follow through on this. I think they're going to probably take the babyface road. But uh, any final wrap up thoughts on this? No, I think we kind of laid it all out there, but it does kind of feel really cool that it feels more like when as opposed to if at this point. Yeah, that is kind of crazy given in nine years, um, you know, that he's 2014, he left in the infamous Royal Rumble and the mass in his side that's, you know, you know, WWE didn't care about and all this. Like, I mean, you go back and listen to some of the stuff he said on the uh, Colt Cabana podcast. That was one of the most listened to podcasts of all time in the wrestling world. Uh, there's still some very, very uh, damning things in there and ones that are also kind of interesting that I think he should address in his promos. But we'll see how real it gets. We'll see if it actually happens. I would tend to agree it probably will. Um, you know, this is kind of the now or never time for Phil Brooks. And um, as much as I don't like what he did for AEW or at least how he represented the company, which is a big problem for me. I understand why you would want to, and maybe the benefits outweigh those negatives. And, uh, you know, I think that's probably what they're looking at, but all right, well, that'll wrap it up for this week, guys. Uh, of course, check out the after dark show that is released every, uh, every week. And I, I think you, you did a nice job this past week. Let everyone know what you did. Well, I kind of just did my own preview and predictions for fast lane. Um, and then gave some more thoughts on Edge, which has kind of been like Cody Rhodes S, well, junior Cody Rhodes S uh, rants, I would say. But that's the fun part about After Dark. Sometimes I could talk about the price of rice in China. I could talk about past <laughs> wrestling. I could preview current events. So on After Dark, that's kind of like what we do. It could be different each and every week, and you kind of get my unfiltered opinion on whatever I want to talk about that week. Absolutely. So yeah, this is a, uh, and guys, I really recommend you check it out again. It's only available on Patreon at the SmackDown tier and above. You're not going to hear it here on the current state of WWE on this free feed. It's only behind uh, the Patreon side of things. So check it out. And uh, of course, thanks so much for joining me this afternoon. And I will be talking to you next week. Looking forward to it, man. Enjoy your day. You too. All right. It's time to give a huge shout out to the sponsor of today's episode, happyhippo.com. So if you guys haven't checked this out, you got to go to happyhippo.com because they have some of the highest quality Kratom products that I've ever come across. And if you guys aren't familiar with what Kratom is, it's an herbal substance that has many different uses, everything from a balanced mind to energy. You can It can help you relax. And my wife and I, uh, over the last couple of weeks, have tried out some of their products and I have to say, it has improved her sleep specifically. She's very anxious and her mind runs at night and it has helped her fall asleep and stay asleep. She actually was using one of the uh, powders that comes in a pouch from Happy Hippo and uh, just dropped it into her water and you know off she went and she was just, she, she was very happy. Let me just put it that way. And so myself during the workday, if you guys didn't know, I have a big boy job. I, I work uh, in, in contract management and I need that balance. I need the energy during the day. And they have something called Hyper Hippo and an energy shot. And those energy shots come in those little tiny bottles. You guys are familiar with it from other brands that uh, use that type of packaging, but there's nothing like this. All right. This energy shot, I take it easy to take. And within minutes, I feel the effects. There's no massive crash after I take it either, which is a huge deal, right? How many energy drinks have you taken uh, and coffee have you drank throughout the day that just leads to the massive crash? Well, this doesn't. And it's it's an all natural herb. And I'm telling you right now, it will help you get through your day. It can help you relax depending on that the type of product you're looking for. Happy Hippo delivers. And guess what? Right now, if you have an order of 200 or more, you can get free next day FedEx shipping and also their stuff tastes great. So check out happyhippo.com. Support the WWE podcast and Happy Hippo. And do yourself a favor as well, guys. I'm telling you right now, if it can help my wife go to sleep for somebody as anxious as she is and as somebody that needs as much energy as I do during the day to, to do this podcast and to uh, do my job during the day. And right now, you can save 15% on your entire order by using promo code WWE15. That's right, WWE15. 15 will get you 15% off of your entire order and starting August 28th, 
they are having their largest sale of the year on their Hyper Hippo product, 40% off. So you'll definitely want to check them out then. But anytime, you can use WWE15 as your promo code to get 15% off your entire order. Check out happyhippo.com whether you're trying to relax or whether you're, you need energy or balance during the day. Happyhippo.com. Thanks for listening to the WWE Podcast. Don't forget to subscribe on your favorite podcast app so you don't miss a show. Or head to wwepodcast.com. And for all of these shows ad-free, head over to patreon.com slash wwepodcast. Until then, we'll see you next time.